Good evening. My name is Raul. You are watching the Ukraine on Fire project. In the near future, we will again follow the events at the front, as in the first days of the war, because the battle for Donbass can become either the finale of the war, or a truce, or a bloody prelude to the destruction of the Ukraine that we know. I have listed all options. In ancient drama there is a term deus ex machina, God from the machine, when during the performance at the moment of the denouement, God appeared on the stage with the help of special mechanisms and solved the problem of the characters. In our case, it could be a secret weapon or just a lot of modern weapons from our allies. And besides, the brilliant plan of our general staff, a plan after which the classics of Ukrainian politics would rise from their graves. One can appreciate the beauty of party play. We have deceived our political opponents like kittens. It is unlikely that God from the machine will save Marupol. You see how the Russian liberators saved him. The city is no more. The number of those killed is in the tens of thousands. When the rubble is cleared, we will approach the figure of 100,000 people. At the same time, it is difficult to overestimate the contribution of the defenders of Marupol to the defense of Ukraine. For almost two months they fettered the grandiose forces of the enemy and took fire upon themselves. The losses of the attackers are such that Vladimir Putin himself is forced to intervene in the situation. I consider the proposed storming of the industrial zone inappropriate. I order you to cancel. This is the case when we must think, that is, we must always think, but in this case, about saving the life and health of our soldiers and officers. There is no need to climb into these catacombs and crawl underground there, along these industrial facilities. Block off this industrial area so that the fly does not fly through. Invite once again all those who have not yet laid down their arms to do so. The Russian side guarantees their lives and decent treatment in accordance with the relevant international legal acts. All those who are injured will receive qualified medical assistance. Combat work to liberate Mariupol is a success. Congratulations. Send your thanks to the troops. Please submit a proposal for awarding distinguished soldiers. In addition to Putin's words, the disposition of the figures and the size of the table are interesting. If earlier Putin sported XXL tables, now, under the cold political winds, greatness has shrunk to the size of a bedside table. Translated from the Kremlin language of symbols, this means that Putin is no longer a Caesar giving orders to his legions, but a government official giving instructions to another government official. Defense Minister Shugu is dressed in civilian clothes no uniforms and orders from the chin to the tops of tactical tarpaulin boots. And I'm almost sure that Shugu is glued to the table and chair. But they did everything inaccurately and in a hurry they also glued Putin's hand to the table. And throughout his speech, he tried to quietly free himself. It didn't work out. The glue itself is going into shortage status this week, because it was produced by the Heinkel Corporation. Now it is very funny to remember how Russian propagandists talked about the failure of the Ukrainian economy and the incredible power of Russia. The only person currently working on import substitution in Russia is Ramzan Kadyrov. It turned out that he was interested not only in stolen armored vehicles, but also in harvesters. In Melitopol, a John Deere dealer lost three combines, a tractor, three cedars, and 20 tons of lubricants. The value of the stolen is one and a half million euros. Of course, the children of the mountains should not understand such things as a GPS tracker, but the Ukrainians understand. Therefore, it was easy and simple to determine that now the equipment is in Chechnya. 
In the village of Zarkanyet at Kadyrov's agricultural firm, Mr. Kadyrov, I agree that armored cars can be called spoils of war, even if they were simply stolen from garages. I agree that a soldier can remove boots or weapons from a dead enemy. I understand that your soldiers need lubrication because different armies have different traditions. These particular traditions have been known since the time of Sparta. But I know for sure that your soldiers went from house to house in Borodyanka and took away money from the civilian population, and this is looting and robbery. As for combines, could you clarify what is required under Sharia law for theft? I'm just not very good at it, and you are a recognized expert. Now a well-deserved marauder combiner of fuel and lubricant troops of TikTok. Guys, you are already a real Caucasian shame. But if you think that the regular troops of the Russian Federation are lagging behind Ramzan, you are mistaken. Commander, come on, my sponsor has to earn money and come home. Do you know how much the deposit should have been? It must have been about 280. And how much did they give? Hundred. For now. Just arrived. Not enough. Everyone, as they saw, was indignant. You promised more, but how much did you send? A hundred salaries and two more salaries. In the end, only a hundred came. Dismantle Mercedes. They have expensive parts. Lexus and Mercedes. <laughs> yes. I thought about it. I thought about Mercedes. We saw an Audi. Good ones. But our commanders take them for themselves and ride. Or shoot with machine guns. I personally watched a new Audi with a shot grill. Singing sonalization. Take the generator if it's intact. The market price is 10 to 20,000 rubles. Dig a dozen generators, that's 200,000 rubles to earn. Sun sponsor. Father is a grant eater. War is business. D Ukrainians, you will find a cache with generators from Mercedes, do not be surprised. This is a cache of the chipmunk people in case of a nuclear winter. The other day I was driving in a car and listening to the radio with an excellent speaker, who very accurately explained why Putin's propagandists decided to use the word special operation, not war. The special operation cannot be lost. It can drag on, go wrong, or just change goals. The word war is not so flexible. It always has a loser and a winner. There are reparations, there are losses on both sides. War is a weighty word, and a special operation is one of the affairs of the great empire. The usual routine, raise an eyebrow, and Ukraine will agree to everything. Raise an eyebrow once and Ukraine will understand everything. And no illusions are needed. Take Kyiv. There is no talk of any quick capture of Kyiv, because we are opposed by the Second Army in Europe, which has been preparing for war for eight years. Vladimir, your eyebrow has peeled off, but that's not so bad. While you raised it, almost two months have passed. 21,000 Russian soldiers were cut out of reality. Everything that could move was burned. And the purpose of the special operation has changed so many times that it will soon lose all meaning. Already lost as soon as our border guards returned to the border in Kiev, Sumy and Chernihiv regions. With which I congratulate our fellow citizens. Regardless of where we stop Putin, we already need to think about the fact that a huge country lives next to us, which considers us Russophobes. 70 to 80 percent of Russians believe that the special operation was carried out because we do not like them. 
To be more precise, nationalists and Nazis forbid younger Ukrainian brothers from loving an older Russian. I will ask an extremely simple question, how does the Russian Federation distinguish Russians from non-Russians? Is there any definition of a Russian person? There must be some parameters. 35 million people lived in Ukraine before the invasion. None of them underwent any genetic tests, did not donate blood, did not check the structure of the jaw. We don't have a nationality box in our passport. Because in the modern world, talking about the purity of blood and race is not just an ideological dead end, it is nonsense a step away from dangerous racial theories. But Putin came up with the perfect test, do you want to be free, speak Ukrainian, live in an independent country? Do you want to be part of Europe? So you are a Russophobe. For this, we will take away Crimea, Donbass from you and try to capture your entire country. За это мы отберем у тебя Крым, Донбасс и попробуем захватить всю твою страну. Самое страшное, что я живу в And now the news from Skrodinger's ship, also known as the Moskva cruiser. Do you remember reading the obituary of the Russian officer Roman Kulagi, who fought alone in a tank against the nationalist detachments? His torso was torn off, but an operation in Moscow helped. So it looks like he is now a captain of the first rank, who witnessed the great battle of the cruiser Moscow against Ukraine and NATO. I have to tell it. It won't tell you on the news. So, the cruiser was attacked from two sides, from the shore and a wing of bombers that entered from the Crimea. During a massive attack, the cruiser's crew repelled a missile strike, shot down 22 missiles, two attack drones, one Su-24 aircraft and a submarine. Okay, I added a submarine from myself. As a result, three Neptune missiles broke through to the cruiser and the crew faced a difficult choice. Suspenseful music plays. The cruiser captain could use anti-aircraft systems. They would cover Moscow with a cloud of chaff. The cruiser would become invisible, but then the missiles would be aimed at neutral merchant ships. And you and I know that a Russian soldier would rather die than innocent people suffer. Let's remember Butcher and Erpen. And, of course, not a single member of the crew would ever risk foreign merchant ships that wormed their way into the Russian naval squadron. What if there were washing machines and carpets? This would explain why no one tried to risk merchant ships. To save the washing machines, the crew of the cruiser substituted the left side under two Neptune missiles and then sank in a disciplined manner in compliance with all instructions. The team left the cruiser only at the command of the captain. Where the sailors left the cruiser is, for example, not clear to me. Perhaps the anti-aircraft systems worked and covered the sailors with a cloud of chaff. It is a cloud of foil that interferes with radar and prevents the terrible Neptune missiles from detecting the ship. In the end, the author of the theory is indignant that he does not understand why this whole story is being hidden from the Russians. В конце автор возмущается тем, что ему абсолютно непонятно, почему от россиян скрывают всю вот эту историю. First of all, I invite you to become a copywriter in our team. Secondly, I will answer your question. Now Russian directors Mikhorkov, Bondarchuk and Kiyosayan are fighting for this script. Because everything about this story is perfect. Especially the combat power of the Ukrainian army. 
I think the Ukrainian general staff will be pleasantly surprised that the army is many times stronger than they thought. And that we have bombers that can come in from Crimea. And as many as 22 anti-ship missiles. And we have so many Neptunes that we will soon sink even merchant ships with washing machines. And now about the predictions of the end of the war. We have a paradoxical situation. According to the Russians, we and our allies are dragging out the war, because Putin wanted to end it in 72 hours. Then to Easter, now wishes for a meaningful victory by the 9th of May. But in two months it became clear that the Ukrainian people are united from Mariupol to Uzgorod. The army fights courageously and effectively. In the Ukrainian society itself, there is an understanding that if we lose, the fate of Mariupol, Herpin, Makarov and Bucha awaits everyone. We have no choice choice but to fight to the death and win. So a war that does not end on May 9th on Putin's terms is an almost 100% victory for Ukraine. The longer we hold out, the more damage we inflict on the enemy, the better conditions we will get in the inevitable peace negotiations. But for this 9th of May, the entire Russian people must see that Putin is naked. He did not take Kiev, and he will not take Donbass. You watch the Ukraine on Fire project. The Russian Federation will lose. Glory to Ukraine.